Well, welcome back to another edition of Zero <laughs> Block 30. I'm Chaps. We got Kate. We got Cons. We got a bunch of stuff that's happening all over the globe. But today we have five rounds in the magazine. Round number one. This one actually is a listener submitted topic. I was cruising last night, just just hanging out at like 1115. I was cruising Twitter to fall asleep like I usually do. Next thing you know, I get this bad boy into my inbox and it is perfect. It's from Snopes. It's round number one. Captain Sir Mansfield coming suggested that the British intelligence agents use semen as an invisible ink during World War One, but later put a stop to it due to the smell. Round number two, Ooh. an update from a wild stolen Valor case from just a few weeks ago. Justice is getting served. There's multiple felony charges that are going out. You fucked around and you found out, Sarah Kavanaugh, actually bad. Round number three, is Tulsi Gabbard a traitor? Yes. Uh, it seems like people from <laughs> oh, every you're single not party. Me. Oh. I think it is a rhetorical question, but the answer overwhelmingly, at least on social media, has been yes, it is true. She is. <laughs> Round number four. Iran reportedly bombed sites in Iraq that houses U.S. service members um, for which Iran, we got to say, not right now. Like there's a lot of stuff that's going on in the world. We don't have time for this. Luckily, nobody was hurt. Nobody was injured. Even like building and infrastructure weren't really messed up. Good. Iran, just please don't right now. There's a lot of stuff that's happening all over the globe. We don't need your shit right now, too. And finally, round number five, we're going to give you an update about what's going on in Ukraine. And all of that is going to be brought to you by our good friends, not the nipple cream. We're not doing the nipple cream. We are going to do nipple cream if we need it. There's no shame in that. No at shame all. in it. Did mm -hmm. you have you guys ever worn like uh, the old Under Armour? Remember when Under Armour first really came out? Yes. They had their performance stuff and everybody... Yep swore by it in the military mm -hmm. there i never enjoyed it really like their stuff that you wore underneath the uniform that's supposed to be for hot weather or cold weather i don't believe in hot weather or cold weather thin stuff like i don't think no. that, that shit works i don't either i just remember it, it came out right when i was in high school and it was the coolest thing ever freshman year of high school getting that super cool looking thing and then what really made it popular was when mike vick started wearing it i thought mm. That looked very good, but I never wore the ones in the military because it just seemed like it was going to be hot no matter what. If your body looks like Mark Wahlberg when he's in peak condition, I feel like you look fantastic in Under Armour. Yes. yes. Every other person in the world looks like a sandbag filled with fucking dough. Like mm -hmm. You yes. just look terrible. Everybody you have no looks idea. Awful. A lot of mirror selfies back then of guys who got off work in their camo pants with the camo pants bottoms and then the Under Armour on top. Just like, oh, yeah, and everybody's like, oh, look at me in my Under Armour. I'm wearing this. You want to fuck me, buddy. I'd have to have at least six whistle pigs if I'm going to fuck you when you're wearing that thing. Mm -hmm. You should get some whistle pig by going to cans.whistlepig to get it. Um, they have all kinds of different flavors. They have the blackberry. They have citrus mint. They have, what else? what's the other one? Lime something? Lime. Yeah, lime. Something. It's fantastic. All of them are it's great. It's not lime. What is it? Kate, you were drinking one. What were you having this weekend? I was drinking I had the ginger this weekend. It was delicious. Ginger. That's the uh, one that I was thinking. Yeah. The baby went to sleep and I said, you know what? It's Friday night. I'm going to crack open I, with pizza. I had a party. You put it in a wine oh. glass. Very yeah. fancy. I always put my whistle pig in a wine glass. Always. Well, because I thought so you were you Katie Chardonnay. Mm. Nope. Nope. Not anymore. Not Katie Chardonnay. Better. She's and Katie whistle pig. pig. And they are, they have all kinds of stuff that's coming out. There's one whistle pig each day. I see like from following their social media. Now they have so many more varieties of their whiskey that I had no idea about. I need to get my hands. Oh yeah. Pretty extensive. It really is. Very extensive and very good. All right. Let's move on to round number one. Okay. This one is a big time story. Cause I've long said the smell of old semen stinks. <laughs> you really have. You really have. I will say, so this is from World War One. I. I feel like not a lot of pineapples back mm -hmm. then. Mm. I feel like pineapple is much more prevalent mm -hmm. now. So I feel like I'll say it. I feel like it comes stunk a lot worse back then. Oh, yeah. Like I I just feel like the olden days. That's one thing you say the world the days is getting of worse on with. But cum is getting better smelling. Well, it's right after the Great Depression. So you could really say that the smell of old yeasty bread affected the stench of the cum back then. Right. Uh, people were not eating as well. And that really mm -hmm. uh, truly does make a difference. Heavy bean diet. And not just any kind of bean, but beans that were previously dried. 
lot of beans, oh, which oh. everybody knows makes your cum just stink. Yeah. yeah, terrible it's like stuff. Fart Cons, cum. what do you think? I think yeah. I've never really given thought to this topic before. And I'm so interested. Can and, I? This and is fucked up to in say. Listening to you two talk about it. Yes, I'll say it. Say it for a whole bunch of actual, really in-depth socioeconomic reasons. I mean, I'll say it. Officer cum probably is, smells better than enlisted cum. <laughs> well, depends. I mean, we're generalizing because a lot of energy think- drinks. Okay. Not as much fresh. You're in the barracks. You're not eating as much fresh fruit and fresh. Way food. more crustaceans though. You're smoking cigs. Ooh. You're right, but officers do eat more seafood. Mm-hmm. It's true. It's something to think about. It really is. <laughs> I think if you if you're gonna eat somebody's cum or smell it, I feel like chicken is the heavy diet mm-hmm. that you want. Just it's very basic across the board. Yeah. You definitely don't want anything like a gazpacho cum. Ugh. Mm-mm. Like forget room it. Temperature. Yeah. No, thank you. But if it's, it'll feel like it's burning your lips. But it's when you're expecting hot soup. Can I just say something soup. really very quickly about this mm-hmm. uh, round, Absolutely. by the way, and, and give chaps some credit. So the individual, I believe it's the same, it has to be the same person because he DM me as well with the story and said, hey, I'm sending this, I sent this to chaps, but I'm sending it to you too because you actually read your DMs. So credit for chaps for actually, I think you've been doing a lot better actually getting into those DMs and responding to folks. And I've noticed. I do, dis- I do read the DMs. I don't always respond because that's a okay. lot of typing. Yes, it's a lot I of always typing. respond. That's, I'm disappointed. That's I thought Captain Cons was going to give us the whole lowdown on Officer Comp, but <laughs> we have an HR department. It's not that would happen. be unbecoming, actually. It would be unbecoming. Mm-hmm. Keyword mm-hmm. coming. All right, so this is from Snopes. On January 11th, 2022, a post was created in R Today I Learned on Reddit that a man named Captain Sir Mansfield Cumming suggested that British intelligence agents use semen as invisible ink during World War One. And we're and not talking watched... junior enlisted sailors, folks. What? Are, who are you talking? No, we're not talking junior enlisted sailor. We're talking actual semen, not semen. Oh, I, oh, actual, yes. pardon me. Yes, mm-hmm. actual not semen. Sailors. Um, mm-hmm. yes. And I thought you were talking about the, if you're an intelligence agent, you're an officer. So we are talking officer come. <laughs> yes. Are. who are semen mm. it's important to if you guys seen the show room raiders right yeah. remember they yes. go in your bedroom on mtv and i feel like this became like a guy like did you guys get paranoid back then someone's going to come in your room with a black light yes no but that would be terrifying i mean they, it would be yeah. i wanted to do it as the company gunny like go in with the black light you like <laughs> right. who the fuck's coming in here well, who, the, show, who authorized you to come in your room they would go in with a special light and, and you could see if there was cum anywhere in the room. And sometimes guys' beds would be like just ropes everywhere under the black light. Look at my tie dye. Right. I you feel so see. bad for today's generation. All they get is ridiculousness. They don't get all right. They don't get the good stuff like that. But you can see how, like, actually, not a terrible idea to use semen as, a, you know, do a little writing with it. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, above the many jokes that filled the Reddit comments, the title of the thread was Today I Learned the British Secret Service used semen as invisible ink during World War I, but stopped the practice later on because of the smell. The Reddit post, and as we all know, Snopes digs into, is this true or false? So they're digging into it here. We're going to find out. The Reddit post linked to the World War I section of Cummings' Wikipedia page. This portion of the Wikipedia cited two sources. The first was a book from 1999, The Quest for C. Mansfield Cumming and the Founding of the British Secret Service, the second was from a 2015 book, Prisoners, Lovers, and Spies, The Story of Invisible Ink, from Herodotus to Al-Qaeda. So basically, we've been using invisible ink for a long, long time mm-hmm. in all sorts of different ways. In addition to these two published pieces, we consulted a number of other books, articles, and material. After reviewing them all, we found that the primary original sources for this claim appeared to be the diaries of both Cumming and Major Walter Kirk. To summarize our findings, yes, they were writing in cum. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, we found credible information that Cumming did suggest during World War I that his agents used semen as a secret and invisible ink. We also found that there was a stench issue as a result from the practice. However, neither of the two sources mentioned by Wikipedia said that the usage of the special ink was stopped because of the smell. So they may have just complained just, about the smell. But... You keep coming and keep writing, bud. Like, we got to get this whole story out there. Like, yeah. oh, well, how long is this? This is going to be fucking 2,000 words. I don't got that much come, first sergeant. Yeah, they're going to 
What the sir, that's the crew. It's all out of cup. <laughs> oh well, it's good. Can't do it anymore. Uh, well, it's time to dip the old quill again. <laughs> <laughs> you you get issued six bottles of Lubriderm. You're like, what is what is happening? What is this for? You're an well, intel. You're gonna be blah, doing blah. a lot of spying. Yeah. We're putting you in the crypto unit. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> oh no. Um, in that, you know, though, I would say I feel like every unit has that person that's like i know i'm immediately Who my comes. brain that comes right <laughs> <laughs> no but like every unit at least on the other side has like that's the horny guy hey, in there, our unit yogurt get over here <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right <laughs> <laughs> right cool. hey there fucking shrimp shells it's here. corporal yo play well <laughs> give me one great brain right damn now <laughs> but we i mean i can picture who it was in my unit right away like that person who would just they didn't even care if anybody knew it during in field inspection days or whatever their flashlight would just be like right out on the thing like they did not care mm-hmm. every if you got all those guys together you could write a novel if you want to War anyway pieces. Cumming was described as a short, thick set naval officer whose yeah, full name was Commander, later Captain Sir Mansfield George Smith Cumming, usually just abbreviated to Cumming. <laughs> how many months to go back and count how many times he's like come or coming or come out? Perfect. And there's a, a name later on in this article. It's even better. Oh, great. He reportedly loved dressing up and noted in his journal details of both his own and his agent's disguises, big disguise guy, including one of his first two master spies, Sidney Riley. Um, and Riley is supposed to be the inspiration for James Bond, by the way. Interesting. Which uh-huh. is crazy, right? I'm going to read that book, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. On page 149 of Andrew's book, Her Majesty's Secret Service, he wrote that in Kirk's diary, it is said that coming referred to a C. The idea for British intelligence agents to use C probably should have been as referred to as O, honestly. Right. <laughs> o, an O face. <laughs> um, he told his agents to use semen. It, the idea came to him in 1915. It came to him in 1915, <laughs> which was, in fact, during World War I. Um, Kirk believed that Cummings' Swiss network was also doing no good at all. C's agents, in his view, took unnecessary risks, or say they do, by frequently crossing the Swiss border into Germany. Cummings sought the help of scientists at London University in discovering secret inks to enable his agents to communicate so they'd be less brisk to themselves. His research had a remarkable outcome. C reported to Kirk in October that the best invisible ink is semen on the grounds that it failed to react to iodine vapor charring or any tests so far devised. So say I'm a spy, I get caught with my cum rag, <laughs> aka my spy notes, mm-hmm. and the enemy's like, no, we're going to pour the stuff on it to see what the words are. You'd be like, no, I'm not spying. And nothing would come up if it was cum. If it was written in cum. <laughs> Kirk asked Cummings what semen seemed to react to. He had no answer to it. So it could truly be that cum is the answer for all this mm-hmm. stuff. Um, on another book, uh, cha- the chapter is known, <laughs> chapter seven, Stinky Ink is the chapter of this. Um, M1, what is it? M16, M16, the spy organization. M-I- M-I-6. MI6. MI6. Yeah. MI6 inv- investigators thought they had solved a great problem, and the men started gleefully experimenting with the new discovery. Obviously, the main way to produce semen at the office was through masturbation. Mm-hmm. The agent who had discovered the covert use of semen reportedly had to transfer to another department after he was teased so much by other staff officers. One officer in Copenhagen took the new discovery so seriously that he stuck it in a bottle for his letters stank to high heaven, and we had to tell him a fresh operation was necessary for each letter he was using mm. old stored up nasty ass semen on his letters one of my buddies jake rich had a had a gatorade bottle full come in iraq stop <laughs> well about full i'd be insane it was like half full okay and he's that's, that's he said when much. he took it off it smelled like stop. ceviche and old movie bottle butter I'm waiting until you're done talking to put the headphones back on. So oh, sorry. man. But Kate skipped over the other yes, name. I noticed that. Uh, Andrew wrote about an agent named Dr. Condom, which may have been a code name. Dr. Condom and Baron Brault, code name uh, Balden, served to provide a channel of communication and payment for Major Ernest Wallington's intelligence works. Condom's appearance on the same page as coming semen idea had, had appeared to be a coincidence, but it was not. This whole story is just ridiculous top to bottom. And what I always think about 
in situations like this or a lot of innovations and inventions for that matter is how do you even get to this point? Like who starts and thinks, you know, what might work as great invisible ink. I don't, I don't know how you get to that point. Like, how does that thought cross your mind? You're horny. Well, what if you, (laughs) you so what if you're sitting there, you're like, look, doing a little bit of lookout duty. You're up there on the top, like Lieutenant Dan challenging the hurricane to sink this boat. It's not Mm going to happen. You (laughs) rip a rope on your hand Mm -hmm. and you're like oh shit gotta find a towel to get that off you climb down you notice it's already gone it disappears it gives you an idea because you've been already into the rum on the ship because you were allowed to do that back in the day and now you're writing it in and come you give it to your buddies like oh there's nothing here wrong put a lighter up to it next thing you know boom whole message right there Mm-hmm. So that was really a rhetorical say, statement watch, by th- that was a rhetorical statement by me, but I appreciate the fact that you took it one step further and actually came to a logical conclusion. Mm-hmm. Now, That's what we do here mm-hmm. is this man the reason we call coming coming? No, I think we've been calling that since like biblical days. I mean, Solomon used to spread his rope around big time. That dude had like seven thousand concubines. He was fucking yeah. mad horny. Yeah, you tell me he didn't write a secret love note to Jezebel. Get out of town. I just don't enjoy this. It excludes women spies. No, I disagree. Fair you can point. have a role as a woman. Like they can write, and you could probably write in your own cum. I would think. <laughs> <laughs> Equal opportunity. I mean, how sexist would that be? Going up to the commandant, being like, "Sir, they're not letting me fucking write letters in my own cum." And the commandant. How embarrassing. Would be like, how embarrassing if you're dating a spy woman and she's like, I just not making any ink with you. The, the well is dry. Let's move on to round number two. Uh, this one comes to us from WPRI. I wanted to include this new segment that comes there because you know when you got to stop saying come for a little bit. I think right, we're, right. we're a little bit calmed down. This one, we're too uh-huh. much come. Too much gum talking yeah, for us. Yeah, a lot. a lot of gum. The WPRI news station, which did a little bit of the background on the story of Sarah Kavanaugh. Here it is, two minutes or less. Here's the background. So this is the first time, I think, since we've started the show, that we've been doing it five and a half years, that somebody on the show has gotten got by Stolen Valor claim. Mm-hmm. That was Katie. That was me. And too, that we were actually upset about it because I feel like this one, it shows the reasons why to get upset about Stolen Valor. We've said it a million times. Somebody trying to get a free donut out of, outside of a 7-Eleven or trying to get a free coffee on Veterans Day. I don't care about nope. that. It's not something that I'll ever care about. This is defrauding the government and making it harder for veterans who deserve care to get care. That's why we're pissed about this story. Kate, walk us through some of the details of what's going on. Yeah, so federal authorities have charged a former North Kingstown Kingstown VFW commander with four felony counts in connection to a stolen valor investigation. In a federal filing, prosecutors say Sarah Kavanaugh knowingly altered a military discharge certificate presented herself as an ill military veteran to receive financial help from numerous organizations and stole the committed identity theft. Yeah, she's still, so she is charged with the following four felonies, using or exhibiting forged or counterfeited military certificates, fraud by wire, radio, or television, collectively military medals or decorations, aggravated identity theft. So according to the federal filing, the wire fraud count carries a maximum of 20 years imprisonment and a $250,000 fine. In a federal court hearing Monday, a judge said Kavanaugh did not pose a flight risk or danger to herself uh, and denied a federal request for detention. Kavanaugh was granted a release under supervision of pretrial services, um, $50,000 bond. Federal court documents show the feds found a gun, a torn up check, and other items in Sarah Kavanaugh's East Greenwich home. I have been thinking about this and like if i had just waited before speaking up would they have found more and sometimes i'm i feeling a little mad at myself no for like, I, I don't think you yeah. should and like we talked about this a little bit on Podfathers, not necessarily yeah. on this show but the ability that they have for forensically to go back and get yeah. information off your computers unless you're really skilled at knowing how to get rid of that you're not getting rid of it so oh, anything shot. that Like people say, oh, you can delete your text message. You can do all that. All they have to do is subpoena AT&T or whoever, and they're going to get those text messages 
all they have to do is have a forensic um, detective go in in your computer and they're going to find everything that they possibly need. There is no getting around. A digital footprint is there forever. Like it, you're not getting rid of it. Somebody can find it unless it's old Barstool sports blocks. That's yeah, the I mean, way <laughs> those, those, are, those are gone forever. But we've said it time and time again, aside from the fact that you shouldn't commit crimes because that's wrong, you shouldn't commit a crime now because there's just no chance you're going to get away with it because you're just not going to cover every track that you need to cover. I yeah. mean, even in some of these videos, like right now, war torn Ukraine, they're able to go back and still like piece together through closed circuit TVs and things like that. People that are walking through the street at certain times, you're always going to get, it's like, you see these people. I saw one the other day that was sent to me. It was this guy that was running through a park. It looked like it was on like a major street, but the building behind was off the major street beaten past. He, like there's people walking by. You could tell he's really disheveled. He runs back there, runs behind in front of the door, takes a huge shit, slips, falls into the shit, got shit all down his pants leg, pulls it up and then leaves. And you would think this guy would say, nobody saw me. I was in a building completely by myself. It was dark and there was people going and I folded back into the crowd. Wrong. There's always a video of you, no matter where you're at in the world right now, you're going to get caught. You just yeah. are. Yeah. Uh, so that's finally what happened to her. Um, and they found, you know, she had been using medical records and as it said, she got charged using fake military records. The medical records she'd been using are real, but belonged to a patient at the Providence VA where she was employed as a social worker. So she know really that was using That's diabolical veterans paperwork. So that would be like a HIPAA violation. Like she's like legitimately fucked and doing yeah. this, saying that it was her brother that was killed in action or twin brother. And that wasn't true. I mean, basically everything that you could do to be offensive in a story for veterans this is it. She claims she has a purple heart. She claims she has cancer from burn pits. She claimed that her brother was killed in action. All of those things are false. Yeah. And I mm. was looking at posts on social media and like the people that she was in the leader of their VFW, they're like reeling from this. They like mm -hmm. cannot, they feel so betrayed. Their sense of trust is, and it, ah, it just sucks. It just sucks all the way around. So I'm, I'm fucking glad that she got caught and got taken down. And uh, I hope that justice is served there. And I want to close this story with the last line that might be the most insane of all. She told Tom Schumann, who is the leader of the patrol base Abate, she said, oh, I went, I was court-martialed before I got out of the Marine Corps because I was being sexually assaulted by my commanding officer on a ship, and I shot him as he attempted to sexually assault me. And I'm like, okay, I got busted down two ranks for that. Uh, Shooting your commanding officer who was sexually assaulting you would not be a crime. Like if you were in the Marine Corps or you're in the military, like if somebody's in the moment of sexually assaulting you, you have the right to defend yourself. Like that is a deadly force situation. You're allowed to. Like so, she huh. would reduce two ranks for that. But we all, and we all would have heard about this. That that yeah, yeah, that, that would that be a story that we say. covered. That yeah. would have yeah, been a story just... that would have made the, the news. And where the it's fuck did you get crazy. a weapon on a ship? And two, just taking things like cancer, sexual assault, all these things that are issues in the military community and using them for your benefits. So gross, dude. It's yeah, that's disgusting because she knows like, oh, if I use sexual assault, they'll have some sympathy for me. And it's just and people are, to that. Yeah, that's terrible. Yeah. It's crazy. All right, let's move on to round number three. This one is going to be brought to you by our good friends at BetterHelp. If you need to get some mental health services, make sure that you're talking to the folks at BetterHelp because relationships can take work, whether you're doing a little bit of a wedding on this weekend for our guy, mm. Cons, yes. having, having a little bit of couples counseling every now and then works wonders for the whole squad, family counseling, individual group. They have everything. This month, BetterHelp Online wants to remind you to take care of the most important relationship. And that's the one that you have with yourself, whether it's hitting the gym, making time for a haircut or even getting therapy, you are your greatest asset. So invest in the time and effort it takes to get yourself to the top position that you need to be in to succeed. BetterHelp is an online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy. You can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try. You're going to see why 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and our listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp. Betterhelp.com slash zero. That's B E T T E R H E L P.com slash zero. Betterhelp.com slash zero for 10% off those first few months of your, uh, your first month of BetterHelp counseling and therapy. All right, let's move on to round number three. This one making the waves. It's very rare 
that you have almost every major player in the political game being like Tulsi Gabbard, traitor. Like when <laughs> everybody from multiple political parties are like, what are you doing? What in the yeah. fuck are you doing? And even people that are pretty even keel that don't talk about politics on social media are like, how in the hell, even if you don't want to say she's a traitor, how the fuck does she still have a security clearance and right. working as a Lieutenant Colonel? I mean, that's this whole thing with people like Tulsi Gabbard and the Tulsi Gabbards of the world have really made me kind of change my opinion on what you should be allowed to do in uniform. Like mm -hmm. she's not an act. She's not a Congresswoman now, but she was serving in Congress while she was still serving in the national guard and i the further we get and the older i get i'm not sure if that's appropriate and i understand all the arguments for like you want people actually serving in the units that you're with but even in places that you're respected i don't feel like it's a good precedent to have somebody who's outspoken about one political party or the other being in uniform because as an yeah. officer or as a senior enlisted person you're not supposed to do that so if yeah, you come right. to work wow. like let's like, let's say, for instance, you come to work and K Kinzinger, I love Adam. I think that yeah. Congressman Kinzinger is a great guy. Let's say he comes in and lately he's been pretty middle of the road, a very centralist position on a lot of stuff. But he doesn't like Biden's policies in a lot of ways. Like, There's a lot of Biden's policies that he hates. He talks about those because he's a congressman. Now he is your commanding officer or he is the pilot on the plane that you're in. How in the world does that not affect the mission? If you're having a mission that comes out as a directive of the president and the person that's the commanding officer is oftentimes outspoken against the policy of that person, how does that work? And is that good good for good order and discipline? The older I get, the more I think, no, it's not. That's that. Honestly, I hadn't thought about it. Till you just brought that up right now. But I wonder, no, you can't. Because everything he says is out there in the public and not just him, but anyone who's, who's serving in, in dual roles and everything is so public these days that it would absolutely affect the morale one way or another. Yeah, so, it would. And uh -oh. even if you like it, like it, you, you have right. one, and that's not to say that everybody that's an officer or senior enlisted or junior enlisted, whoever doesn't have their own political ideology, but the difference is you can't espouse that political ideology when you're in uniform, you can't do it on social media. You can't do it in these places and that, but just because you're yeah. a congressman, all of a sudden you can. It makes well, it's such a technicality because when they're doing that, they're technically not in uniform. So they're technically not going against any sort of orders that they shouldn't be, ridiculous. which is some galaxy brain type stuff. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh, just because they're wearing a different outfit. That, That's that like blowing your mind everything. when you're a kindergartner and you're walking into a grocery store and you see your teacher. You're like, holy yes. shit, Mrs. Johnson lives outside of kindergarten too? What right. the hell is this? Like, That's yeah. essentially yeah. what it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I appreciate their service. Especially when you're going full Tulsi Gabbard, uh, she does, yeah. she doesn't help the uh, the argument against what you're saying there, chaps. That's for mm -hmm. sure. Um, yeah, former Democratic Representative Tulsi Gabbard has been condemned as a traitor and accused of being a Russian asset after she shared misinformation regarding the existence of U.S. funded biological labs in the Ukraine. In a tweet posted on Sunday, the 2020 presidential hopeful discussed claims which mimicked a Russia-backed conspiracy theory that the Kremlin has been pushing out in recent days in an attempt to justify their invasion of Ukraine. In a video, Gabbard claimed the undeniable facts, that's in quotes because they are actually deniable, are that 35 to 40 U.S.-funded biolabs in the Ukraine are conducting research into dangerous pathogens. Gabbard went on to express concerns that these deadly pathogens could be released if the labs in Ukraine are targeted amid the conflict with Russia. Targeted by whom, Tulsi? Targeted by whom? Like you just leave that part out, that's pretty big. Like the people that you're protecting and the people that you're espousing their theories, they are the ones that are bombing these places, Tulsi. So maybe mm -hmm. say, Russia, stop fucking bombing these areas. And one, every major country in the world has these types of labs. These types of labs are designed to prevent things like um, pandemics. Like whenever you have big time research facilities like that, that's what they're for because every area of the world wants to be able to look at their own individual data about what's happening in their parts of the world and really break that down scientifically so that, oh, I don't know, another COVID doesn't happen. Mm. Yeah. Um, and Gabbard also recently appeared on Tucker Carlson's Fox News show to discuss claims of Ukraine developing bioweapons. And the clips of that were used on Russian state television. So she's 
helping their propaganda machine. Anytime that happens, you should immediately have the Job GIF or Job uh, thing where it says, I've made a huge mistake. Like if you yeah. get featured on RT for your take, it's probably <laughs> bad. It's probably a bad take. Uh, GOP representative Adam Kinzinger, who Chaps was just talking about, tweeted that Gabbard was spreading actual Russian propaganda and accused her of being traitorous. Others accused Gabbard of appearing to be working on behalf of Russia by helping them spread conspiracy theories about U.S. funded biolabs in Ukraine. Republican Senator Mitt Romney gave some of the harshest condemnation of the former Hawaiian Democrat, Hawaii Democratic Congresswoman, tweeting that she is parroting false Russian propaganda and that her treasonous lies may well cost lives. While That's the world a pretty Health- strong statement from old Mitt, who's usually as yeah. exciting as plain white toast. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. While the World Health Organization recently advised Ukraine to destroy high threat pathogens being housed in their labs to prevent an outbreak if they are attacked, there is no evidence that the U.S. is funding these facilities. And in fact, pretty much every country has these facilities. Mm-hmm. Every country is working on this shit, um, has stuff going on in their biolabs, whatever. The White House, Pentagon, and State Department have all dismissed the reports that the U.S. and Ukraine are working together to create bio and chem weapons, describing the conspiracy theories as laughable and an attempt from Moscow to justify its own horrific actions in Ukraine. I will say that's the only thing that gives me pause, that all three of them are like, this is laughable, makes me think that it's kind of true. Yeah, <laughs> once those three are in cahoots. Wait a like if all three of them are great. Hey, wait, wait a second. We got to have the old right right foil hat there. Maybe Tulsi, maybe we're too maybe hard Maybe she's on, on to something. Uh, the U.S. and the Ukraine have been working together since 2005 to research deadly pathogens as part of the Pentagon's Biological Threat Reduction Program. The partnership between the U.S. DOD and the Ukraine Ministry of Health is part of the Cooperative Threat Reduction Program, which began in 91 with the aim of reducing the threat of weapons of mass destruction following the fall of the Soviet Union. According to a fact sheet released by the DOD, the U.S. works with Ukraine and other countries to research the threats of dangerous diseases affecting both animals and humans. So again, this is like a big giant co-op where everyone shares their information kind of thing. It's not like we're in this secret cahoots, whatever. Um, the U.S. has invested $200 million in Ukraine since 2005 to support 46 Ukrainian laboratories and their research into disease threats. Such work in Ukraine helped the country in its response to COVID-19. There's no evidence of U.S.-funded labs in Ukraine developing germ warfare capabilities. Similar conspiracy theories have been pushed by Russia for decades, including claiming AIDS and HIV was developed in a U.S. military lab. Ridiculous. So, Ridiculous. Pulsey, it it seems like Gabbard. every day with her. It's like that it's the, oh no, baby, what is you doing gift? She just continues to just dig her hole deeper and deeper. And what a fall from grace that she was this darling that was potentially making a run at the presidency. And now she's clearly dismissing herself. And what makes me think maybe there's a sliver of sympathy for her is she's, people in her position. I'm pretty speculating here. Well, I'll say b- besides it. that. Not- um, wow, Kate. Yeah, that's subjectifying <laughs> guess, women. Leave but... it to, to you to do that. Um, but I suspect that Great people like this. It. Extremely <clears throat> toned. Extremely they toned. They have people chirping in their ear, their team or whatever. And there's probably squats. somebody, mm-hmm. people like telling her to say these things and like taking these angles and taking these stances. I, I have a hard time believing she's reaching all these conclusions on her own. So she's just surrounded herself. Cause she's a, a woman con. Yeah. Cause no, wow. wow. she's in politics. Wow. No. Cause she's in politics and they all what? just, cause I think she gets, she gets away with a lot. She gets away with a lot of it because she says Aloha a lot. I yes. feel like when, Ugh. when you say you don't, you're lacking the Aloha spirit. Yeah. I feel like that takes the wind out of, any argument against whatever you're saying like if you say look dude like i understand where you're coming from but you're kind of lacking a little bit of aloha spirit right now i feel like Uh, i gotta rethink whenever somebody tells you that well did you see her video where she said um she's this was when the bombs first started falling and this came out right after that woman who was like putin if i was your mother i would have raised you with love and this wouldn't have happened then tulsi came out with a video saying I have both Ukrainian and Russian friends, and I know that they have aloha, respect, and love for each other. Exactly right. Putin, yeah. Putin, it's time for you to have a little bit of aloha in your heart. And it was like, bitch, what the fuck? And I would call him man a bitch too. Fucking fix everything. Friendly reminder, I would call him man a bitch too. She's like, um, the moral of this story. She's she is not supporting Ohana. Gabby mm-hmm. Tulsi right now. Gabby no. Tulsard, Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Somebody Tulsi. needs. To- 
get her back to Hawaii and say that you can't go past the reef. You need to have Mm. Moana come Mm -hmm. and tell you where to go. (laughs) You don't need all this Mm -hmm. shit, Tulsi. Fucking Tulsi. But you're right, Khan's about her. Like, she was this kind of darling. And not just from... I don't think liberals really ever liked her. And I don't Mm. think... It was mainly, like, almost MAGA folks that kind of liked her a lot. Well, yeah, right. and I think that, that lent itself to the the military background, but, you know, she was on the other side of the aisle. So free thinker. She could, She's a free yes, thinker. Yes, right. she, so she, she could she be been, seen as someone who bridged the gap. If I'm writing a QAnon story, if I work for Q, big Q, and I'm just mm-hmm. like, oh, let me come up with something weird today, I keep her in mind. I'd be like, what's a little something that you would pick up on here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'll mm-hmm. do it. Mm-hmm. So, hmm. All right, what's, her, what's her only course of action now, though? Like, what, what should she do now? Just go oh, away, she's going to be fine because she's going to profit off of it big time. I oh, mean, yeah. she's Probably. you're already seeing her go on the biggest shows like Tucker Carlson and fucking Sean Hannity like that shit's yeah. profitable. If you can continue to do that, she's going to make more money doing that type of thing, being a correspondent. She'll probably get a show on one of the major networks, being a political commentator, because people, even if it's nonsensical, people like, quote, outside of the box thinkers like that's You what know what they want. You know, what would make me respect the shit out of her. If, if like, say we were at a bar and she and I were good friends and she was just like, oh no, I don't believe any of it, but, but you should see my new boat. <laughs> and, we, and then we laugh and laugh. Like then I'd be like, all right, respect. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. I would too. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to round number four. This one comes to us from Iraq. Like this was a terrible story that came out and it was, it's one that didn't really pick up a whole lot of steam from what I saw. Did you guys see a lot no, of, Oh, you're right. It kind of just it? flew under the radar. I saw the, like the one tweet and beyond that and our, and what we said in our group chat, there was nothing. Comparatively I... to what happened. Um, I think it was two years ago in Iraq, whenever, Iran, after the um, killing of Soleimani, had a retaliation strike where I think it was two dozen American troops were, were end up, ended up getting diagnosed with traumatic brain injury. Like there was a lot of belly who about we that were one. like in tears on radio when it, we were live yeah. on radio when it happened. And we were like, oh, my God, like the whole world might be about to fall. Like we were on edge when that shit happened. Mm-hmm. And this, this time, one is like nothing like this, this. It was a blip in the radar. I. Pat was away all weekend. He's still, and so I was with the baby. And when you're alone with like a one-year-old that you can't even pick up your phone half the time because you're just constantly keeping them from eating shit, yeah, eating sh- like whatever, no. like doing yeah. f- cracking their heads open, whatever. So oh, wait, I sorry. Did I see that he, he kind of is saying words now? Yes. He's saying words now. Uh, uh-oh cool. is the main one for yeah. all the, the shit he's causing me. Um, but so I didn't pick up my phone until I was rocking him in the chair about to put him down that night. And I, the first thing I see is that Iran bombed like somewhere, something U S installation in Iraq. And I t- immediately sent it to you guys. And I was like in a panic. I was like, Oh my God, like shit's about to go down. Nobody responded to me. I start scrolling Twitter more. Nobody seems to care. And I was like, what the fuck's going on right now? Mm-hmm. Cause I've been in like a hole all day. And you're right. It seemed like just a blip in the radar. Anyways, footage, this comes up to us from the drive. Footage posted to social media. Of, I said that was a long way to just bring up my son. He's perfect and beautiful. <laughs> Anyways, footage posted to social media Sweet reportedly bands. shows the impact of at least five projectiles in herbal Iraq near a U.S. military base and consulate. Unconfirmed reports indicate the attacks involved FETA 110 ballistic missiles launched from Iran, not smaller rockets or artillery shells used in previous attacks against U.S. installations in Iraq. So this was no small small beans mm-hmm. this is a big beat some would say and those ones that you're thinking uh picture like this a small dump truck and these are like the size of a small dump truck mm-hmm. these bombs that they were dropping this time mm-hmm. they're pretty there's big, no yeah. thankfully there is no immediate reports of casualties or u.s retaliation for the reported attacks if confirmed the attack would be the first of its kind since a coordinated missile strike against u.s forces in iraq in january 2020 what we were previously talking about those attacks came after a U.S. drone strike killed Soleimani, a top Iranian commander, on Baghdad's airport road. Sunday's reported attacks come three days after two Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps members were reportedly killed in Syria by an Israeli airstrike. While smaller rocket and mortar strikes by Iran-backed proxies in Iraq and Syria, as well as suicide drone attacks, have become more common since the 2020 missile attack, ballistic missiles have not been used since. So... Let me get this straight. Israel did something that Iran didn't like. And so Iran, because we're friends with Israel, Iran came at us. 
I think that that's what they are saying. I'm not sure if that is what like the U.S. State Department has said, like that they think it why it happened. What We're I still investigating believe, it, right? Like so, I've seen that some people said it is still in response to Soleimani, like in his birthday that's coming up. His birthday was on March 11th. So they're thinking that that that's the reason why two years after his death and on his birthday that it was a a shot across the bow. But really, nobody, the State Department saying that they're going to monitor it and that they're doing investigations. I think that they're trying to let it kind of go underneath the radar because nobody was hurt. Nobody was injured. Not even any buildings were messed up. Right. And they don't want to escalate, which I think is smart considering where the rest of the world is. But at the same time, like there definitely is going to be that section of society that is like, oh, no, they fucking shot a bomb anywhere near an American. They need to be turned into a glass factory. Yeah. Big time turn the other cheek response right now. And I appreciate that they're being thorough and they're investigating to to see what the reasoning was. But I think it shows obviously great restraint if we just let it go, because then the other thing is, too. I think it's kind of like if, uh, you know, you're, you're walking and there's like a little, little tiny dog kind of like yapping at you and, and you just like ignore it and don't let it bother you. And by not giving any attention, you're almost complete. You're just dismissing them completely. So then they realize like, Oh wait, we can't even have an effect on them right mm-hmm, now. Because- that's how you walk out of a, an interview at a washer dryer store with shredded stockings. Exactly. Right. True. Yeah, thank and you. Fully ignore it. But I will say too, yeah. I feel like it was by design by Iran also inversely that nothing bad happened that like no one was hurt. I think that was part. I think if they wanted to, they could have, but I think too, it was like, Oh, well this happened. So we need to show everybody that yes, we're mad, but like, you know, I feel like it was just a, a dog and pony show on their end too. Maybe yeah, I'm wrong. There was but. definitely some intelligence that came out around the time that <laughs> they believed even in the 2020 strike that Iran wasn't trying to actually hit anyone. They were doing it for their hardliners that wanted to take a shot after killing Soleimani. But either way, can we just fucking knock it off, dude? Like there's yeah. enough shit going on in the world. You know what? It's like it's like when you're at the bar and, and you accidentally bump into that one guy and he's like, oh, so you want to fight? And it's like, dude, it's not that serious. Like we just kind of like and I get this is more than bumping into somebody at a bar. But you, you understand, like we don't necessarily always have to have the response. Oh, well, time to take it. Take this outside and start a huge fight. Like it's it's I think it's OK to have this response where we take a step back and we don't necessarily need to retaliate in kind. Let's just block Iran on Twitter. Call it a day. Yeah, like, there we that, go. That should be our and, response. And, and take McDonald's fun. out of Iran, and then I think yeah. we're good. At least nobody yeah. is hurt. That's the good news. Nobody was True. really seriously hurt, so that's the great news. All right, let's move on to round number five, which today is going to be presented to you by our good friends at Sip. All right, Rocky Boots. If you haven't tried Rocky Boots yet, you need to. There's um, some new boots that they just got, and I got. They're bright yellow. They're kind of like the... Um, boots that you would wear if you're going on a deep sea fishing excursion but oh, yeah. i love them and they're the kind of boots where a lot of rubber boots if you put them in your feet all of a sudden they on your feet with no socks on that you feel like you got jellyfish all around your feet <laughs> like that's <laughs> yeah. not what these feel like somehow they stay dry they're comfortable you don't even have socks on if you're going outside to take the dog out and it's wet which is great my pajama pants bottoms don't even get messed up because I just tuck Ooh. them right inside there whenever I go out to take baby Dale Woohoo. You can do that too by going to rockyboots.com in the promo code ZBT and you're going to get 25% off. It's a great deal from a great company. Everybody that's bought them so far has really liked them. They've yeah. said that they've liked them a lot. They have it no matter what job you do. If you're in the military, first responder, you're a nurse, you're working construction, whatever, they have the boots for you. Make sure that you go to rockyboots.com in the promo code ZBT at checkout. You're going to get 25% off on your next pair of boots let's move on to round number five where we're going to get into some ukraine updates we're not going to spend a whole lot of time about it because i'm sure like most of you guys you see all the news that is going around but there is some big developments that are happening kate walk us through what's going on in round number five yeah so talks between the two sides are to resume this week that as we speak hopefully they're happening uh if we're recording this on a monday via video conference, according to Ukrainian negotiations and the Kremlin, after both sides hailed progress at earlier rounds aiming to stop the fighting. Have you Um, guys seen any of the videos or the blogs that are breaking down who the Russians have sent for their negotiations? No, I haven't seen it. It is. For us, I think it would almost be like doing 
let's say an election briefing where you're going to do, let's talk about election security. And the only people that are going to sit at the table to come up with these standards are like Rudy Giuliani, um, <laughs> that other woman who is uh, the, uh, Sydney Wells, not Sydney Wells, Sydney, Sydney something that is like the lead attorney for Trump and the stop the steal shit. It'd be having those groups for the Americans and then have people from like the companies that are actually doing the elections on the other side. You're not getting anywhere. Like this, right. the, the dude that was on the side of the table, the leader for the Russians at these is a professor who only teaches about the goodness of imperialistic Russia and how Russia should dominate the rest of Europe for the rest of time. That's the person that they sent. So he sits down and Ukrainian are like, okay, what the fuck? Like that's yeah. the kind of shit it would be helpful if like CNN, Fox News and MSNBC reported on like the show. Not only is Russia killing a bunch of innocent civilians, but they're treating these negotiations as a farce. Oh mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That, and I, everything I'm seeing, is just going to get uglier and uglier. Um, and Russia's continuing to go straight for civilian targets. Now they're not even hiding it. They don't even care. Um, one person was killed and 12 others were injured after an air raid on a residential building in Kiev took place. The death toll was revised earlier from figure of two dead. Um, nearly 2,200 were killed in Maripol. Nearly, uh, 2,200 just regular old civilian residents. They've been killed since hostilities began. Um, they face, that city faces a worst case scenario if the warring parties do not urgently reach a humanitarian agreement. Uh, the Red Cross is saying humanitarian disaster is written all over this. Ukrainian President Zelensky has warned NATO that uh, member states could come under Russian attack if they do not act to impose a no-fly zone over his country. His comments came after at least 35 people were killed in a Russian attack on a military base near the Polish border. Some of these bombs are dropping only about, I was reading about 15 miles from Poland, not even, or mm -hmm. maybe it was five miles or five minutes. It's, they're getting very, very close. Um, Instagram is no longer accessible in Russia. I was going through over the weekend because you can put in locations around the world and just, I like to do that sometimes. I put somewhere super far away and I look at the top Instagram posts, see what life is like there. So I put in Moscow, Russia, and it was all their top influencers saying goodbye, like final wow. photos being like, all right, follow me on this other Russian app because Instagram's going away now. Um, Instagram was inaccessible on Russia uh, in Russia today after Moscow accused its parent company Meta of allowing calls for violence against Russians, including the military on its platforms. The move comes after Facebook and Twitter were blocked in early March as part of sweeping efforts by Moscow to control information available to Russians about what its military was doing in Ukraine. Um, Let me ask yeah, you a question. I, I believe me, I understand that this is important. Does any part of this feel trite, or does it feel like it's impactful? Like taking Instagram matters. away from the influencers, taking that oh, stuff matters. matters. Yeah, yeah, I definitely right? think it matters. And I, yeah. we see how much social media really can be a call to action in all sorts of mm -hmm. different ways. Um, and so that was what my thing was. I think so much today is just the nature of how we communicate as a as a people across the world that when you eliminate something like this, it, it impedes their ability to do that. And you can see that it matters because of the actions that Russia is taking behind some of these sanctions and Western businesses pulling out. For example, with Russia, even something small like not being able to have McDonald's, you know it's a big deal because Putin almost immediately said that they were going to nationalize McDonald's where they were still going to have the same type of food, but it's not going to come from Russia, but they're going to try to have the same type of meals. You see it with the news, and I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but Russia apparently is a, a preparing to have mass executions, like public mass executions for people who are caught demonstrating against Russia. There's been multiple videos of somebody going out with a little almost a little bit bigger than a three by five index card holding it up in front of the kremlin that only said in russian it said two words that's it not like these two words but the words were quote two words that's all it said immediately taken and put it in a van and moved off another woman they said what do you think about what's going on a journalist asked her what do you think about what's happening in ukraine and she's like well i'm not really sure if this is something that we should be doing a meet any type of discord at all immediately some guards came in on and live took her tv away. they came and took her away yeah like, a lot they of are people not that shows to me that these sanctions are effectual and they don't want people to even look into what's happening and a big thing, like it was Russia that shut down Facebook and Twitter because a lot, there's a lot of Ukrainian Russian families that are, I've been seeing news reports where like this Ukrainian 
newscaster was like, here, I'll call my dad right now in Russia. And like, dad, do you know what's going on? Blah, no, that's not happening. No, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. Because they can't see if they were on Facebook and Twitter, they would see what's happening and the horrors that are happening. And instead they're all denying it because, you know, they, you know, Russia's making sure they don't see this stuff. And it's very and close United- borders and very close in culture too. Like a lot of the culture, there's so much overlap of how they act culturally too. So like you have these small change. to me, it'd be like living in Buffalo and having Toronto just on the other side of the border there, even though you're from two different countries, you have more in common being from Buffalo right. and Toronto than you would have being from Buffalo and let's say like fucking Carson city. Like mm-hmm. there, yeah. there's way more that you have in common. Yeah. Um, the U.S. and China are sending top aides to meet in Rome on Monday amid mounting tensions between the two over the Russia-Ukraine war, with the U.S. saying Russia has asked China for military equipment to help press its campaign. China has accused Washington of spreading disinformation over Beijing's role in the conflict. Uh, well, of course, I'm with the U.S. on this. One. Yeah, I don't trust, obviously, General. I've read a Almost- lot about China and how they are influencing what's happening in Russia or lack of influence. And China, for all of its fault, they are very isolationist. Like whenever you hear people talk about <clears throat> America first or like we want to have our own democracy first, that's exactly what China does. Everything that China does is China-centric and doesn't give a shit about anybody else. Everything's China-centric. And they the, the basic um, analysis here is that China's not going to do anything either way. Like they don't want to get involved with it either way because they know if they do, they hurt their relationship with, with the West and how... Western Europe would respond to China wouldn't be great. And they don't want that. All they care about Mm -hmm. is money and growing China's influence around the world. So being involved Mm -hmm. with Russia would not help that cause. Yeah. Yeah, And I Um, think that's counterintuitive to what a lot of people think. I think a lot of people just think, Ooh, China bad. They'll definitely team up with Russia. And I don't think that's necessarily the case for the reasons you just pointed out. Yeah. And I think that that is another point of that is how we in America have really, we lack nuance. Like we just, completely cannot understand what's happening in other parts of the world without an American centric view. Like one of the biggest things is gas prices where you have so many people in America think that Biden sets the gas prices. Well, then why is the fucking gas in Germany more expensive? Why is it everywhere on the globe? It's more expensive. It has nothing to do with the president of the United States. And there's little that he could do. I said that when gas prices were starting to rise for President Trump. I said that whenever President Biden started taking, uh, our President Obama was super stoked that the gas prices reached record low over like 20 years. Doesn't you don't do it as the president? Like they, yeah. the the oil companies are the ones that do it. They had a record amount of profits in the last quarter by like 200 billion dollars or something, and people were like, "Why are gas prices high?" Because they want to. They want it to be high. There, I mean, the price of oil in 2008, whenever it reached the one of the highest spots that oil had been um, in recent memory, it was it was trading at like 135 dollars a barrel. At 135 dollars a barrel, gas was four dollars and fifteen cents on nationwide average. Now, gas the oil price is $106 a barrel and the na- the national average is 575. How does that make sense? It does. Right. Well, it doesn't, but it does that 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 logic doesn't fit everybody's narrative as hey, here's a bullet I can use against the president that I don't like who who whomever that might be because this the gas prices have been something that have been discussed for for multiple presidencies now. and democrats so do that unique. shit too if this was yeah. if this was trump and the the prices yeah. were 550 democrats would be like president john oh, needs yeah. to go out there and do something all over it like, cuz they'd be idiots too like the <laughs> the entire system is filled with idiots oh yeah yeah 100% um but but just to the on the other side like when it's really good like oh look what we're doing it's like no just because it's good doesn't mean it's it's your you didn't do that either, either. yeah right like, so yeah. if gas prices go down to like 250 Biden better not take credit for it you can't right. say it's not my fault and then take credit for it whenever it goes down inevitably when it w- does go down yeah um back to ukraine mm-hmm. really quick here um nearly 2.7 million have fleed so far a hundred thousand of them in the last 24 hours, more than half of them have gone to Poland. Moscow says it wants artificial default. Russia's finance ministry accuses foreign countries of trying to force it into default through unprecedented, unprecedented sanctions. Russia said it will hit back with its own measures, putting limits on local media and international news sources. Hundreds uh, held in Russia's protests as chaps are talking about 
Um, nearly 15,000 people have been detained across the country since February 24th. Russian police have taken more than 800 people across 37 cities for protesting against the military operation. And then, yeah, 15,000 across the country. It's pretty, pretty insane. Um, and I wanted to talk really quick about too, on the last episode, we talked about that maternity hospital that got bombed and um, in Maripol on March 9th. Mm -hmm. And this iconic photo that went out of this pregnant mom on a stretcher. She's very pregnant and she's laying there and there's blood and gore around her waist. And these guys are carrying her and she's, she's alive. Her eyes are open and it just went mega viral. The, the building's just destroyed in the background. There's smoke going up. And I remember seeing and just being like, please, I'm not religious. I was like, please God, let this mom and her baby just be okay. Let them be okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and they died, um, her and her unborn baby. So just, um, just the stuff coming out about it and oh it's just crazy and that There's... story flies in the face of some russian propaganda because whenever that story came out there was reports that russians were saying that's where a bunch of neo-nazis were located and a lot of the extremists in ukraine were they kicked all the patients out there's no patients it was just a military target at that point and then the ap has hundreds of photos of actual women that were trying to leave and people that were in the hospital trying to get care it's just it just wasn't true like from top to bottom it just wasn't true which has basically been the mo of putin i actually saw too like speaking of it's remarkable now with hindsight bias going back multiple presidencies and hearing what people presidents have said about president putin over the last 20 years legitimately some shocking stuff um one of them was president bush which is i mean i guess i i honest to god i wasn't as like in touch with what was going on back then but president bush was like this guy has got a, i've seen his heart i've seen his compassion i've seen what he wants from the world like you want to have that one back bud like that's not mm. one that you want to be on the record talking about and even president obama for sometimes he was harsh on putin there's, there was definitely videos of them that came out where they were a little bit too chummy too. And then of course, what president Trump has said about him, Biden was the only one that they didn't really show a whole lot of him snuggling up to, to Putin. I was surprised. But again, it it's all like a game. A lot of it is just for show. And a lot of it's to like stop world, esc world escalation to a world war three kind of happening, you know, yeah, so who knows how they really felt and what they really feel. I Prior will say, to um, them showing their true colors now and their true capabilities, we were all under the impression, you know, based on the intelligence we had and previous beliefs that they were a much bigger threat than we're seeing them actually uh, showcase now. Yeah, keep yeah. your enemies close, I guess. Um, macro dosing here at Barstool just did a podcast that just deep dives into Putin's life. <laughs> so you're actually talk about like macro dosing, like, okay, let's get into mushrooms. Let's no, but they, and but one of the interesting things I was, I've been listening to other pod, again, I'm cheating on that, but I'm trying to learn more about like, how did Putin even come to power? Cause he wasn't that big of a name when he did. Mm -hmm. Like it was kind of this crazy thing. Well, um, look it up. There's wide, pretty much widely accepted that he bombed his own people, like bombed over 300 um, killed over 300 Russians bombing multiple apartment buildings throughout Russia, blaming it on another country and then going to war with that country and being, and everybody's like, look, he's a hero. And it came out later that like, no, pretty much Psycho. pretty accepted that he's the one who did that. He mm -hmm. killed his own people, like has no problem doing that kind of stuff. Just fucking easy, crazy, evil, crazy guy. And I'm reading more and more that I don't know how true the stuff is, but that like, he's really coming unhinged and he's just going to keep pushing bodies at this until just a fucking meat grinder. Um, the Russians are losing far more obviously than Ukraine, but like he's, I feel like he's just going to keep pushing bodies, pushing bodies. Because he's probably reached to the so, point where no matter what happens, he can't turn back. There's no turning back and you're not, yeah. going, he's never going, no matter, even if he withdrew everybody today, the West never forgives this. Ukraine never forgives this. You're not going to have, they have to have regime change. Like that's the mm -hmm. only way Russia could get back into the good graces of the rest of the world. Is mm -hmm. regime, regime change. Putin cannot go to the international table ever again. Like it just won't well, happen. I yeah. just thought Unless of this. I wonder. Yes. You're, no, you're right. That, that's a good point, chaps. But I wonder if there's anywhere, and I'm not suggesting any one country over another, but if there's any plans to completely just take Putin out 
an ex. Oh, gotta be Senator Gray. Has to be right. Fucking talked about that like two weeks ago, yeah. or not yeah. even two weeks ago. It's like yeah. somebody's got to fucking assassinate this guy. A little different <laughs> when we say it. <laughs> right. Different like, vibes. I, I, but. it was a weird moment because I, when I saw the tweet, I was like, well, the worst person that you know has made a good point. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> I, that's exactly how I felt about Lindsey Graham. I never usually agree with Lindsey, but I wouldn't hate it. Like if somebody took took him out but it was that same adage that people are always scared of who's behind that guy like is the person that's behind him gonna be even crazier mm -hmm. maybe Pro uh, you never know. probably yeah probably could be. could be all right let's move on to some save rounds and alibis which today is going to be brought to you by our good friends at simply safe if you haven't tried simply safe you should they're a fantastic organization that is helping keeping safe homes all around the country simply safe protects your home around the clock, every door, every window, and every room. It's true. Every window. I have these little things on my window that when one of my dumbass kids opens it up because they're like, oh, my room's too hot. I don't care if your room's too hot. Open the bedroom door, not a window. I'm not trying to heat the outside, Kelsey. I'm not trying to do that. So make sure that you have those on there so when your teenager tries to open it up, you will know. They have a comprehensive set of sensors and cameras, including the new wireless outdoor camera, um, which was lovely when we had the ice storm. I was able to monitor my big trees in the backyard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. by not even going outside and keeping my toothies all warm. Simply Safe is less than $1 a day and it can help you. Um, you don't have to talk to any of those major um, companies that will are going to charge you an arm and a leg for months and years at a time. There's no contract, so you don't have to worry about that. You can even try it 60 days risk-free to see if you like it. If you don't send it back free of charge, you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes by visiting simplysafe.com slash ZBT. Go today, claim a free indoor security camera plus 20% off with interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafe.com slash ZBT. Let's move on to save rounds and alibis. Cons, we're going to have to start with you because this was a big story over the weekend that came out from your beloved West Point. Can you explain to us what happened? Yeah, so, and I'm sure a lot of people saw the story and didn't even realize that the students were from West Point. It made news all I did. over there. Yeah, I, I originally saw it and I was like, I hadn't, and then you sent it again. I was like, what? Yeah. So, yeah. And I mean, there's been multiple reports that have come out on who was involved. And ultimately, I, I don't know the, nobody knows the, the names of the kids involved. Nobody knows who they are and anything about them. Uh, you know, I hope that they are all physically and, and doing better and, and improving. But yeah, there was a story that came out that multiple students who were on spring break down in Fort Lauderdale ingested cocaine and it was laced with fentanyl and overdosed as a result. What's even crazier is that I saw reports that it was six, six people that OD'd. But apparently I read that four of the students ingested the cocaine, but then two of them overdosed when they didn't even ingest any cocaine, but they were doing CPR on the folks that had. And apparently you can overdose from fentanyl. Chemical specialists have said, have said that that can't happen. Like that okay. that's not true because right. they, they didn't want that information to get widely out because then you don't know if somebody's having that OD. If you're like scared to do mouth to mouth, there's some chemist and some, um, like detectives that work at the DEA and places like that, that have said, that's not true. Like, so if somebody's having oh. uh, like, they need CPR, you can give CPR without feeling the risk that you're going to get fentanyl poisoning as well. So there you go. That's a great example that all these stories are coming out. And I think anytime you're dealing with stories like this, where there are people overdosing, you're not going to have the full picture. Cause initially it was reported that they were all on the football team. And then I saw reports that only one person was on the football team. And bottom line is I don't want to speculate until more information comes out. I will say it's, it's very upsetting story. Uh, I think obviously when you hear West Point or any of the academies, you think that these kids have a, uh, you know, a certain level of judgment that they're above doing things of this nature. And I always say, just like when we talk about people who are in the military, you're dealing with 18 to 22 year olds who don't always have the best judgment, even ones that go to service academies. And it's very unfortunate that likely they won't be able to continue their service at this point and then into the military as, as a leader of soldiers, they've compromised that. And that's unfortunate that you make a decision that can ultimately affect the rest of your life. And it's very, very tragic. And ultimately, first and foremost, I hope that they are all okay and they all pull through. Um, but there are consequences uh, to your actions. And then the only other thing I'll say about this, and 
you know, may call me a square, call me arc, whatever. I I've never been someone who was in into drugs and never had a propensity to try stuff even once. Didn't just didn't care. Didn't appeal to me for, you know, whatever reason. But if I were a kid or anybody these days and knowing that there was even the slightest chance that I was ingesting drugs that could potentially kill me. Like if I handed you a glass of water and you were really thirsty, but I said, Hey, by the way, there's a 1% chance this kills you. Wouldn't you go find another glass of water? Like why take that chance? But you know what? So when, yeah. when you're that age, one, you right. feel so invincible. I picture, I've said it before, but I used to do really dumb shit. I used to do experiment with drugs or whatever. And like, quite honestly, I don't know if I, cocaine was one of them. Mm-hmm. Um, in, like, very stupidly when I was in college. And I feel like if we knew that had been a threat at the time, we were so wrapped up in partying and stuff that we probably would have made dark jokes about it while we were doing it. Mm-hmm. Like it right. would have made it even more funny to us somehow. Like when you're yeah. young, you forget how stupid you are. Like, I'm sure they were like, it's going to be out of our system quick. It's going to be whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like no big deal. And they probably just wanted to feel like all the other college kids down there, even though Mm -hmm. they know better. Danger is never for you at that age. It just legitimately is never. I mean, the same type of thing, same age group, you know, walking through Fallujah or Marja or wherever you are kicking trash on the side of the road, probably not the best idea because there's IDs all over the place. That doesn't stop people from doing it. I did Mm -hmm. it. Like, Like danger is not for you. Like whenever you are that age, to me, there's certain aspects that I understand that West Point will, I would say 99.9% likely of kicking all these guys out. At the same time, the older I get, I'm not sure if that's the right move. I feel like sometimes you can show a little bit of grace and understand that people made a mistake at another year. I mean, there's other different types of punishments that you could come up with to let them rebound. But I feel like sometimes if you let people rebound and you give them a second chance, a lot of these types of stories can end up good because these, even if you are a junior level officer, there is undoubtedly going to be soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marine who are in these folks' unit that are going to need some grace that Mm -hmm. are going to show like they are going to be redeemable people, but they need that chance. They need a second chance. And sometimes you can act on a second chance and perform way better. I mean, honest to God, I'm an example of that. Like if, if every, if Barstool didn't take a chance on me after my criminal record, I wouldn't be here. Wouldn't have the voice that I do and the platform that I do having a little grace sometimes goes a long way. Cocaine. I understand like it's tough because you have a zero tolerance where you can't even enlist and all that shit. So it is difficult, but every time something happens, people immediately want harsh, punishments to come down and i'm not sure if that's always appropriate yeah, yeah. It's, it really is tough because obviously we have a, a, a reputation and it's you know we are, are thought of in a very you know great light so when anything like this happens especially when athletes are, are mentioned people are running right to the opportunity to take take us down and to take shots and, and condemn all these kids uh, and people on twitter are. were so fucking annoying this weekend being like well that's west point football for you blah blah it's yeah. like shut the fuck up these kids are still in the hospital shut the fuck up you guys are right. so annoying they're being dumb college kids just like all the other dumb college kids it's not a reflection on the football like whatever i just people were so annoying this weekend People I normally agree with. I was just like, oh People my God. People were upset that I put on the <laughs> caption that I put speedy recovery. They're like, oh, speedy recovery. Yes, dude, they're in the hospital. I hope they get better. Yes. I don't and want w- them to fucking die and have brain damage because they and did coke once. Those kind of attitudes too. Like one of the first things I texted you guys was, thank God somebody in that room decided to call the cops mm-hmm. and not wait it out for them to get better. I can see with any college student being afraid yep. to call 911 especially if I was at West Point and especially if I was an athlete, whoever nutted or flapped up to call the mm-hmm. police there and call 911 and get help, that was- That's moral courage. It's like moral even in courage. a bad situation, it is moral courage. People are like, alive because somebody did that and that mm-hmm, was not yeah. easy to do in a stupid just, situation. I, I'm just, it's just tough because you want to always hear nothing but good stories and it's just, you know, not the nature of things. Some people are going to make mistakes and it's unfortunate. It reflects poorly on the school. And that's something that they're going to have to deal with. And 
punish these kids appropriately. And, yeah. and again, I think first and foremost, their health is the, the main concern, but it, it's, it's tough to see because you don't want to ever suspect that anything bad is going to ever happen. But again, 18 to 22 year olds, bad things are going to happen. And yes, I know we want to hold ourselves to a different standard than the normal 18 to 22 year old. And I do think that by and large, a lot of times there are situations where, a, you know, a lot of 18, 22 year olds would have found themselves in a precarious position that kids at West Point or Naval Academy or anywhere of the, the same ilk avoid. So there's a lot of stories that don't happen because they did make the right decision. But obviously when something bad happens, you just need to know this is going to get blown up to epic proportions. What do you think happens to the rest of the students? Um, there is a good chance that, you know, privileges get revoked for the second semester. I, I mean, that is a hard line in the sand to draw because I'm trying to remember if these sorts of things, I, I feel like I remember people getting kicked out for drugs when I was there and it didn't affect the rest of us, but because of the public nature of, of this, mm -hmm. I think the leadership might feel pressure to go the other direction and say, Hey, we're really making an example and we're tightening the screws with everybody to really drive home the point that you need to hold yourself to a higher standard. If you're going to go be responsible for our nation's sons and daughters in the military, sorry, you, you don't get the leeway. You don't get that grace chaps. It might go that way. It might go That's that direction that they say way to look at it. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I, if I'm don't the think leader you, of that can't argue with it. I'm just if saying, I'm the leader like, of that they, school, I'm kicking them out. But I'm hoping, yeah. I'm, but hopefully, with resources that they, they can. I don't know. I might would keep the one that this, made the decision to call the ambulance. Like, yeah, because I, I'm, in the I moment, like I, I feel like you have to have some type of redeeming quality, like where you can't be scared to do the right thing, even if you are in a wrong situation. Like realizing that you're in too deep is a pretty good thing. I don't know, man. It's it's fucking the tough. Whole situation for sure. is sad. I feel bad. Um, I feel bad for all of them. Quick mm -hmm. update. I mean, I feel bad for him and I don't at the same time. It's like, fuck. Um, because I look back at young me and I'm like, I don't, you made a lot of fun and fucked up your life and I don't feel bad for you because you you knew that it was wrong and you were still doing like, I don't know. But look but, how you um, bounced back because you weren't fucked. Like and that's if I, I hadn't lied to the Marine Corps and said no, I never did those drugs, they never would have let me in. Exactly and right. as a former drug user, I did great in the Marine Corps. It changed my life. I haven't touched stuff since, you know. Mm -hmm. So whatever, you're right. And things to think about. They caught the person who sold them the fentanyl, um, and he has been arrested. Um really right. It's 50 times stronger than heroin, up to a hundred times stronger than morphine, and it commonly resembles prescription drugs. And they mix it with the cocaine or whatever because it's so much cheaper. Uh, but they're putting oh, in, oh, I yeah, have cut, two, yeah. two people in my life, a family member and a family friend that I've lost to, to fentanyl. So it's no fucking joke. Um, and the last thing we'll say about this, like yeah. Kate is mentioning, there is things that you can do if you are using drugs recreationally, like, cause that happens and to act like it doesn't happen is fucking stupid. People use cocaine here in Just, New York. It's like a cigarette right. in, the, in some circles. It's like no big deal. It's like, whatever. But now even at, like, I don't know, go yeah. on Amazon. You can get fentanyl stress uh, test strips and you can test the product that you were given to make sure that it doesn't happen. You definitely look like a nerd, but it's better to look like a nerd and walk away the next day and still being alive than taking the chance of having a fatal overdose, which is getting more and more common as fentanyl use spreads amongst drug dealers and shit like that. Mm -hmm. Just don't take the chance. Yeah. Um, let's move on to you, Nick. What do you got? He is over yeah. at the yak. Oh no, oh, I'm back. No, he's back. I am he's back. back. I made back it back in time. Yak. Um, yeah, so just, uh, again, you know, you're going to hear from me each week. YouTube, we are within striking distance of 10K. That's what we want to yeah, get to right I, now. I said, I said on Twitter, the only thing I want for my wedding, gifts from folks, just subscribe to YouTube. That's it. No but envelopes do, for no envelopes for cons. There's going to be no, sh no shaking of the envelopes. But if you do feel propensity that you want to give a little more Captain Cons on Venmo. Yeah. If you are our 10,000 follower, I will send you this half-used jar of nipple butter. Wow. <laughs> What a deal. what a treat! I might unsubscribe and then subscribe for the ten thousand because I can see uh, that shit. Now, now I won't say but I was because I put I just like a pool cue. I put my nipples right on this thing, like nipple carmex. Uh. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So something to That's, think about. We made it weird. All right, Kate, what do you got? Ooh, uh, I guess I would just like to say come a few more times to mm -hmm. add to the tally. Come, coming, come, shrimp, come. Cool. Cons, I'll give you a, another chance if you had anything else you want yeah. to add. 
uh this weekend i started watching yellowstone man I, i'm just my only regret is that i didn't start sooner because that show was awesome same but love is blind yeah there's something sure. about a man who rides a horse <sighs> mm-hmm. yeah what's up Drip? except for putin yeah <laughs> all right Oh, that was the thing that when the president's going back to different presidents to look at how they responded. Do you remember President Obama got fucking roasted for riding a bike with a shirt on and a helmet? It like it was this he was doing some goofy bike ride on like a mountain bike and he was mm-hmm. wearing a yes, shirt and a that. helmet. And people were going after him because he looked like a pussy because Putin was riding a horse with a shirt on there like look at the strength of the russian president meanwhile we got obama over here as a fucking nerd mm-hmm. with a helmet on mm. yeah <laughs> yep ridiculous yeah. all right kate anything else just come. um trying to think oh come on brain think of something baby's not sleeping oh he is he slept a full night the other night which is like never happened and i was like oh my god we're on to the next phase and then last night and I'm, I've been with him by myself for a few days now and will for a few more days. So like, it's just, he just, the guy won't go down. The guy will not go down to sleep. And now he learned the phrase, uh oh. So I watched from the night vision camera as he pulls his pacifier out of his mouth, yeets it across the room and goes, uh oh. And then oh, if I don't play fetch, if I don't come in to get it, he starts screaming job, at the top of yep. his lungs. You think a smart a smart person would be like, well, I'm gonna have to bite the bullet. He's gonna have to cry. I'm not gonna go get it and play this game. Well, I'm a fucking clown. So of course I'm like, God damn it! All night long, I was just going in and out. And uh oh, and I'm like, God, I gotta get up again, get up. Whatever. Anyway, so I'm on. You're no such sleep. a sucker. You're a good I'm mother, so, but I'm a sucker. Such a sucker. I can actively see because around nine months they start to. You really cannot spoil a baby. You cannot hold them too much around nine months they start to learn manipulation it's just like a natural thing and i can really? see him doing it it's it's like when you see them screaming crying and you come over and there's no tears in their eyes and they stop immediately and you're like you little son of a that's the difference of whenever a kid falls and you've been like oh my god and you acting like they should be hurt and next thing you know they're crying and yeah. if you don't act like it they don't do it like there's one tiktok that illustrates being a parent perfectly where the mom is or the dad is walking through the house and he hits his hand on the wall and goes, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And starts holding the, the baby's head and the baby like starts wailing. Like it got like like been- bloody murder because the the way that the parent reacted is the, the reason why it happens. It's just so I common. can see him doing it. I, I want, and I'm still like, well, I'll still give you what you might. And I just, I'm so wrapped around his finger. Well, Cause you're insane. just thinking, wow, he's just so advanced that he's already able to manipulate me. And then I'm like, I'm on the train and I'm staring out the window thinking like, you're a bad mom. You're going to ruin him. You're fucking going to ruin him. Oh my God. Every little decision I make, if he commits tax fraud when he's 38, that's going to be because I kept getting his pacifier now. Ah, like uh, I, I've been way overthinking it. So anyway, that's what's going on with me. No, well, not also, you. Also, the next time you hear me on ZBT, I'll be down in Florida for Captain Cons's wedding. Mm-hmm. I'm leaving on Wednesday. I might be flying with the baby solo, so this could be a Whoa. quite the adventure for me. Um, and yeah, this could be a whole to do. But I'm very excited. My parents are meeting me down there. They did a whole road trip. We got a little Airbnb. I'm just very excited to. This cold weather's been been fucking lame as hell so yeah i'm excited to uh to get down there i'm just rambling now i'm gonna see how long traps lets me go for no keep come, going coming come 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 it's on the retreat mm.